Today's scripture, which Barb read, is actually the very, very end of a quite a long scripture, which is probably too long to read here. It com compri comprises all of chapter 10 of the, gospel of, or the book of Acts. In chapter 10, a story unfolds of which the principal characters are a Roman centurion named Cornelius and a traveling preacher named Peter. You see, it seems that Cornelius was a Gentile, and not just a Gentile, though. He was a Gentile who was a devout man and who worshipped the Lord God. And Cornelius is at prayer and has a vision, very perplexing vision. An angel came to him and told him to send someone to Joppa to find a person named Simon Peter. Now, it makes no sense to Cornelius. Lots of times, holy visions don't make sense. We're not about a sensible faith here. Um, but Cornelius, being a faithful man, sends two slaves and a trusted soldier. Remember, centurion would be over a whole group of soldiers. We're talking like a commander. Sends a trusted soldier to find Peter. Now, at the same time, meanwhile, back at the ranch, actually in Joppa, Peter is also praying. And he sees a vision as well. And it is a vision of a sheep lowered from heaven. And on it are all kinds of animals. All of which, apparently, uh, if you read the text closely, are non-kosher. For Peter hears a voice that says, Get up, kill one of the animals and eat it. But Peter, being it about Jew, says, ah, But Lord... These animals are all unclean. Now, it seems trivial to us today, um, but this was a big, big deal if you were Jewish. You know, the, this, it was a, a part of your cultural distinction, um, and it's still important to Jews today. It's one of the things that separates you, what you eat, separates you from the general population. Uh, it's just part of your faith. And so Peter is very confused. Cornelius isn't the only confused person in this scripture. Peter is confused, and God apparently knows this, because God sends the same vision three consecutive times. All right. God tells you something three times. Better pay attention. So Peter's trying to pay attention, and lo and behold, the doorbell rings. And no, it's not the Avon lady. It is the two servants and the soldier sent by... Cornelius, they talk to Peter about, we are supposed to come get you. Completely confused. Peter agrees to go, and when he arrives at Cornelius' house, he's still uneasy about being there in the first place because Jews did not associate with Gentiles. But he goes in anyway, he hears Cornelius' story, thinks about this trifold vision that he's received, you know, the old aha moment? You ever have one of those where suddenly you get it? I do not have many of them. But I've had a few, and this is one for Simon Peter. He gets it. He knows what's going on, and he says, and here's where the scripture comes in. This is today's lectionary. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation... Everyone who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to Him. In other words, the gospel of Jesus Christ is not just for one ethnic group, but for everyone. This is a turning point in the history of Christianity. You have to wonder how those words burned the ears of the entourage who were accompanying Peter. You see, this borders, this little sermon that Barb read for us, borders on the blasphemous, intimating that God loves all people, just not those who practice circumcision. And our scripture today says they were, I love the adjective, astounded. Not just of Peter's message, but that Peter's message was conferred by the Gentiles being given the gift of the Holy Spirit. See, the significant thing in this is 
Okay, Peter, how do you know for sure? And in this case, the Gentiles start speaking glossolalia. That's the speaking in tongues business. That's the technical Greek word for that. And Peter says, we need to baptize. It is astonishing. The depth of God's love extends to anybody, no matter your background, no matter who you are. I would love to stand here and say that the man with the mustache and the tattoo, that story has a happy ending. I don't know the ending. Because that man left our worship that day at the Millville Christian Church and I never saw him again. But boy, many times over the years I have wondered what might have happened in that man's life had we, the members of the Millville Christian Church, read today's passage from Acts and lived it out. Perhaps somebody might have gone to the back of the sanctuary and greeted this person. Maybe they would have invited him to sit with them, to sing with them, to experience God's gift of love for all people. And maybe, maybe there would have been an opportunity to tell the resurrection story of Jesus to that man. Maybe we would have needed to fill the baptistry, but you see, we'll never know. Somewhere in all the doing of church, my whole congregation had forgotten to do ministry, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus to anyone, anyone who walked through the door, no matter their gender or race or age or class. You see, these wonderful, caring, nurturing people who had helped me grow up in the faith had figured out how to care for each other. But in that I had forgotten how to care about everyone else. I hope, I pray, that that never happens here at First Christian Church Festival.